Welcome to this IDDBA cast, How Food Processors Work to Prevent Listeria, part of the International Dairy Deli Bakery Association's initiative, Safe Food Matters, Focus on Listeria. Listeria monocytogenes is a foodborne organism that can affect many types of food, including some deli foods such as ready-to-eat meats, salads, and cheeses. We spoke with Dr. Kathleen Glass, senior scientist at the Food Research Institute at the University of Wisconsin. She told us about her work at the Food Research Institute and steps that food processors are taking to reduce the risk of listeria growth in their products. Dr. Glass explained that some foods with very high acidity, or low pH, are less vulnerable to listeria contamination. Manufacturers must be especially vigilant about protecting foods with low acidity or neutral to high pH. What we do is we do work with large manufacturers Mm -hmm. uh, for ready-to-eat meat products, for dairy products, and also uh, for salads, deli salads. We have a pretty good appreciation as to what are going to be the critical factors that will allow the stereo to grow. We know that in higher moisture products that are more of a neutral type of pH, that listeria, if they're on there, and they're held at even at refrigeration temperatures for a longer period of time, so we know they can grow. So what they're trying to do is put in additional hurdles, different types mm-hmm. of intervention strategies, and the things that they have control over is by adding those antimicrobials or by somehow changing the formulation. So maybe they just add a little bit more acid and Mm -hmm. that will help drop the pH sufficiently, that'll reduce the uh, growth of listeria. They might add, you know, those fermentation byproducts. Um, They might add some other types of antimicrobials, but each one of those things has to be tested individually because they have such a different type of interaction depending upon Mm -hmm. what kind of food products there are. In, uh, it might, those same type of ingredients might work well in a low-fat product, but not necessarily in a high-fat product. Or they might work in a beef product, but not necessarily in a chicken product. <laughs> and it sounds like all you have to do is add one, two, three, and you're done. But it is very um, has to be very individualized. And also, of course, they want to have food products that taste good. Mm-hmm. So what they're doing, the manufacturers are doing, is trying to take their own responsibility in making sure that they've done everything they possibly can to make that food product safe through distribution. Mm -hmm. Then they're really hoping that whoever is at the retail level is also going to take the next part of the ball, and then hopefully the consumers will take that third part of the ball. Antimicrobials are an important weapon in the arsenal against listeria contamination. Some of the things that they are doing is for, for we do have the traditional antimicrobials that mm-hmm. they're working on, with, which is uh, sodium nitrate, sodium lactate, and sodium diacetate. Mm-hmm. Then, because of the big sodium reduction um, initiatives that are mm-hmm. going on, that's putting those antimicrobials at risk of being reduced, as well as salt, mm-hmm. which is sodium chloride. So what we're looking at are alternatives to those sodium-based antimicrobials. Mm-hmm. And some of them are potassium-based. Um, sometimes, as we were talking about, we're looking at other kinds of natural type of ingredients. Those might be other types of organic acid based type ingredients that also have antimicrobial activity but don't contribute the sodium content. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, an alternative. Um, Other types of, like I said, those fermentation byproducts can also be sodium alternatives. All of those are being explored as other antimicrobials. In addition to that, there are certain uh, groups that will have other types of processing uh, procedures, one being high pressure pasteurization, uh, which in which they'll put the sliced product into a package mm-hmm. and put it into a special machine called a high pressure pasteurizer. <laughs> and basically what it does is it puts on enough pressure onto the microbes that it destroys the microbes and doesn't allow them to grow. Mm-hmm. So if you destroy them, it's just like cooking them. Mm-hmm. Um, also, certain kinds of um, manufacturers, because they don't want to put the antimicrobials in there, they might put it in the package and basically cook it in the bag. Mm-hmm. Those 
are good if you've got an intact package. Mm -hmm. But once again, once you get them into the slicers and uh, you're going to potentially recontaminate it, mm -hmm. you don't have any other safety value. Besides the sodium, potassium, and acid-based antimicrobials, there is another class of antimicrobials called bactericins. Bactericins are a natural byproduct of fermentation. What the bactericins will do is they basically punch holes in the cell membrane mm -hmm. of the bacteria and the contents leak out and they die. Mm -hmm. And because they die, then obviously they can't grow and reproduce. Manufacturers usually note any antimicrobials they use in the ingredients list. Retailers can consult this list to better understand what steps manufacturers have taken to prevent the growth of listeria. If you know, the retailer understands what goes into controlling listeria, they can start looking at the ingredient label to find out what there is about it that will prevent growth of listeria. Mm -hmm. And it's really up to the manufacturer to make sure that once it gets to the retailer, it's mm -hmm. going to be as safe as it possibly can be. Mm -hmm. um, but if they understand, you know, they look at the ingredient statement, then it says turkey, water, salt, sodium lactate, sodium diacetate, sodium nitrite in there. That gives them a signal that they've added something that will inhibit microbial growth. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us for a look at how food processors work to prevent listeria. We hope it has helped you gain a better understanding of what the food industry is doing to prevent foodborne illness caused by listeria monocytogenes. For more resources on IDDBA's Safe Food Matters Food Safety Initiative, please visit IDDBA.org forward slash Safe Food Matters. <laughs>